Do you believe that even in the darkest moments of life, we can find a light that not only illuminates us, but also completely transforms our destiny? In this video, we will delve into the story of a man who faced unimaginable adversities and discovered that his greatest tragedies were, in fact, disguises for divine blessings. We will explore how, through devastating losses and nearly unbearable pain, he found a new reason to live and a faith stronger than ever before. Are you ready to challenge your perceptions and perhaps even your deepest beliefs? Allow me to share with you the extraordinary journey that has been my life. My name is Job, a prosperous and wealthy man who seemed to have everything. However, in the blink of an eye, a series of catastrophic events made me lose everything, challenging not only my faith but also my understanding of existence. I was born in Uz, a region richly blessed by God. The lands I owned were fertile and my herds were extremely prosperous. God smiled upon me, blessing me with 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 pairs of oxen, and 500 donkeys. In the lush fields, shepherds led my cattle under the warmth of a generous sun, while my children played in the gardens, their laughter echoing, bringing joyful melodies to the environment. Seven sons and three daughters, true fruits of my joy, were like stars lighting up the sky of my life. My life was a constant celebration, each day a reverence to the divine grace that permeated my residence. It was a symphony of success and gratitude, enveloped in fear and devotion to God. My faith in God was the foundation of this fortress I built. Every morning, even before the sun rose on the horizon, I would bow in humble worship, immersed in the peace of my existence. I created rituals to safeguard the purity of my children, offering sacrifices to the Lord, always concerned that in their celebrations they might inadvertently sin against God. My faith was immense, serving as an anchor in times of prosperity and as preparation for the storms that would inevitably shake my life. My life was an altar, and my devotion was the flame that kept it burning. Even in days of prosperity, I recognized that all blessings emanated from the generous hands of God. This deep connection with the divine influenced every aspect of my existence. I was not just a blessed man, but a grateful servant, a relentless worshiper. However, just as shadows follow light, one day devastating news arrived. Consecutive messengers appeared, each bearing a report of disaster after disaster. Calamity struck my life mercilessly. My valuable possessions, icons of my wealth, were snatched away in an instant. The Sabaeans, relentless in their offense, attacked my oxen and donkeys, stealing them and killing my loyal servants, who zealously tended the herd. While I was still trying to grasp the magnitude of this first tragedy, even more desolate news arrived. A celestial fire, undoubtedly a divine manifestation, descended from the skies as if it were God's own wrath. Its fierce flames advanced mercilessly, consuming everything in their path. My sheep, which previously rested under the watchful eyes of the shepherds, were swallowed by this celestial fire. The scorching heat of the flames intertwined with the agonizing screams of the shepherds, whose lives were equally consumed by the fiery storm. But the misfortunes did not stop there. The worst was yet to come. As I absorbed the shock of these material losses, a storm of emotions approached. The cruelest news of all struck me like a sharp blade. My children, in a moment of celebration, were taken by a force beyond human comprehension. The house where they were, in a moment of joy and fellowship, was torn apart as if it were made of paper before the fury of a storm. My children, whose lives were promises of a bright future, were suddenly killed by this devastating force, leaving behind only pain and emptiness amid my agony. I tore my clothes and shaved my head in a moment of profound anguish and despair. I found myself sitting among ashes, as if the dust and ruins around me were a faithful mirror of the chaos that tumulted within my soul. In the solitude of desolation, 
Even my wife, my companion for so many years, succumbed to the affliction that enveloped us. In a moment of despair similar to mine, she suggested that I curse God and accept death as a release from our anguish. My eyes, which once witnessed abundance and prosperity, now saw only ruins and desolation. My possessions, which were symbols of my security and success, were swept away in a whirlwind of tragedies. The pain of losing not only my wealth, but also those I loved most, opened a seemingly endless wound, and thus engulfed in the darkness of losses, I found myself confronting the harsh reality of life. Tears flowed like rivers down my face, bearing witness to the loss of everything I had worked so hard to achieve. In the face of overwhelming pain, an internal conflict unfolded in my heart. A part of me, shattered by the losses, cried out for divine justice and understanding. While one part of me, shattered, clamored for justice and understanding, another part, the whispering voice of faith, sought to comprehend the purpose behind the storm. As if the adversities were not enough, a skin disease began to emerge like a subtle shadow, an inconvenient itch that quickly evolved into something more sinister. I was overtaken by painful sores, ulcers that seemed to spring from the very core of my flesh. Every morning as I looked in the mirror, I witnessed the progression of this affliction. The sores multiplied, spreading like a voracious plague. Each day was a struggle against the darkness that threatened to consume my soul. The uncertainty of why such affliction tormented me challenged my devotion to God, but even in the chaos, the flame of faith persisted, fragile yet resilient. At the height of my pain, while still trying to understand the extent of the tragedies that had befallen me, three loyal friends, Eliphaz, Bildad and Zophar, decided to leave their homes to comfort me. The news of my affliction deeply troubled them, and they united in a journey to share my pain. Upon seeing me from a distance, they could barely recognize the once prosperous friend. The lament echoed in the silence, and in a gesture of solidarity, they tore their garments and sat beside me on the ash-covered ground where I sought some solace. Days turned into nights, and they remained by my side in silence, united in the face of the magnitude of my suffering. However, when they finally spoke, their words were like bitter balm. Instead of comfort, they brought theories that tried to justify my pain as a consequence of wrongdoing. Eliphaz, the eldest and considered the wisest among them, suggested that my suffering could be the result of some sin I had committed, advising me to seek God in repentance. Bildad and Zophar followed the same line, questioning my integrity and suggesting that my affliction was divine punishment. My emotions, already on edge, oscillated between frustration and anguish. I, who always sought to live according to God's principles, found myself facing friends who, in their attempt to console, aggravated my affliction with their misguided interpretations. Thus, amidst tears and bitterness, I faced not only loss, but also the loneliness of not being understood in the whirlwind of suffering. My soul plunged into the depths of doubts and questions, while physical pain tore through my body and an even greater anguish gnawed at my mind. It was then that I lifted my eyes to the heavens in search of answers, crying out to God with an insatiable thirst for understanding. In the divine silence, I dared to question the purpose behind my suffering. I confronted God about the reasons that transcended my human understanding. Why, O oh Lord, I, who feared your name and sought justice, became the target of such affliction? The tears streaming down my face sought not only relief, but also the light that could dispel the shadows of my ignorance. In this intimate dialogue with the Almighty, I questioned his existence and sought to comprehend the reasons for my torment. I pondered the balance between divine justice and the apparent injustice that befell me, trying to understand the Creator's designs even when my eyes saw only darkness. At the peak of my search for understanding, the questions seemed to multiply faster than the stars in the sky. 
God revealed himself not in a gentle whisper, but through a display of grandeur that made my being tremble before his majesty. The Lord, in all his splendor, responded to me not with empty words, but with a demonstration of his creation. He transported me through the ages, questioning me about the creation of the universe, the foundations of the earth, and the control over the elements. I felt minuscule before the grandeur of his work, a mere creature in a vast cosmos sculpted by his hands. Each question from God was an invitation to contemplate the magnitude of the divine. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who shut up the sea behind doors when it burst forth from the womb? When I made the clouds its garment and wrapped it in thick darkness? Each word from God was an invitation to dive into the mysteries of the world's creation and recognize the profound greatness of God. In describing the magnitude of the behemoth, a majestic creature he himself formed, God reinforced his sovereignty over all things. Look now at the behemoth, which I made along with you. It eats grass like an ox. See now, its strength is in its loins and its power in the muscles of its belly. It moves its tail like a cedar. The sinews of its thighs are tightly knit. Its bones are like tubes of bronze, its limbs like bars of iron. They are like tubes of bronze, its bones like bars of iron. It is the first of the works of God. Only its maker can approach it with his sword. The words of the Lord sounded like thunder, challenging me to comprehend the mysterious power that governs the universe. In every detail of nature, I saw the divine signature, an answer that went beyond my limited inquiries. Amid the whirlwind of emotions and questions, I witnessed God's response and the restoration of my faith. My vision was broadened beyond immediate circumstances, contemplating the vastness of the divine plan. In humility I bowed, recognizing that His answers often surpass human understanding and yet are profoundly true and just. After the supernatural encounter with God, my perspective transformed in an unparalleled way. What once seemed a sea of doubts and anxieties was now illuminated by divine understanding. I realized that my afflictions, though deep, were just an intricate part of a much larger plan written by the Creator's hand. This transformation occurred not only in my view of the world, but in the essence of my being. The understanding of God's grandeur and sovereignty brought with it a serene acceptance of life's circumstances, the tears of questioning gave way to tears of gratitude for the divine revelation. This experience shaped not only how I viewed personal tragedies, but also how I approached existence. The profound understanding that God is sovereign over all brought a peace that transcends human comprehension. The suffering was not erased, but its perspective was transformed into a tool for spiritual growth. Now each day is lived with a renewed purpose. The encounter with God restored me, revealing a path of redemption and hope. In my prayers, I began to intercede for my friends who did not have the opportunity to witness what I experienced. And surprisingly, the divine responded in a way that exceeded all my expectations. My lost riches were multiplied, not just as a simple restitution, but as a clear sign of divine grace. I received 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 pairs of oxen, and 1,000 donkeys. Now a tangible expression of God's response to my supplication on behalf of those who, despite their misguided advice, were my friends. The generosity extended beyond my material possessions. Those who once hesitated to approach now gathered in my home. My brothers, sisters, and all who knew me before shared not only in my restored prosperity, but also in the living testimony of the power of prayer and God's faithfulness. Each piece of silver and each gold ring given by them were not just material blessings, but a confirmation of the rebirth that occurred in my heart and in my life. Furthermore, the disease that plagued my skin began to slowly recede. 
The sores that marked my body started healing, and the excruciating pain gave way to a sense of relief. It was as if a divine hand touched my skin, dissipating the affliction that consumed me. God, in his infinite mercy, blessed me with a new lineage. In a magnanimous gesture, he granted me ten more children, restoring joy and fullness to my family. The restoration was not only physical, but also spiritual, a living testimony of how circumstances can be transformed by divine intervention. I came to understand that I am just a grain of dust lost in the vastness of the universe, a small particle in the Creator's masterful work. In the face of the grandeur of the infinite, my worries and afflictions seem to diminish to a mere shadow. Life, a fleeting breath, is a precious gift, and my anxieties, an insignificant burden in the face of eternity. Today I see how Satan, with his cunning, sought to shake the foundation of my faith, questioning the integrity of my commitment to God. He suggested that my devotion was merely superficial, driven by the benefits I received, and claimed that if deprived of wealth and health, I would certainly curse God. But amid the ashes of my afflictions, I resisted. Even so, I realize that my understanding is limited and my challenges fleeting. Divine wisdom surpasses my own comprehension, and in surrendering to his greatness, I find peace in recognizing my own smallness. My heart, once hardened by affliction, now softens before his power. In his presence, words of repentance flow like a river of sincerity. I, who dared to question, now bow in acknowledgement of my own fragility. Every painful step became a testament to my steadfastness in trusting that beyond the dark clouds, the sun of divine providence continued to shine. Just as the stars persist in the darkest night, my faith shone even when surrounded by the shadow of uncertainty. The encouragement to face challenges with hope and faith became the essence of my journey. In the face of the unknown, I found strength in the conviction that God, the architect of the universe, also shapes each chapter of my story. Each challenge is an opportunity for growth, each trial a step in the ladder of my transformation. Don't let the journey end here. Subscribe to the channel and activate notifications so you won't miss any of our future videos which are full of valuable content that can brighten your day and strengthen your journey. Leave a like if you felt inspired today and comment below on how this story impacted your life or how you overcame challenging moments in your own journey.